E questions are being raised about the government's prosecution of reputed mob boss John Gotti. As Regina Blakely reports, some jurors in the case are speaking out. For the second time in a week and just two days before John Gotti is supposed to be sentenced, a juror has come forward alleging pressure by government prosecutors to bring a guilty verdict against the former Gambino family boss. Honestly, deep down inside my heart, my mind wasn't where I believe it should have been at that time. Requesting anonymity, the juror told WCBS correspondent Mary Murphy he was not paid for coming forward. In response, U.S. Attorney Andrew Maloney said any such statements would be inconsistent with what jurors told the judge before deliberations. Evidence of a conspiracy by the mafia to pay off jurors in other Gotti cases has resulted in an indictment against one jury foreman. This led the judge to not only sequester this jury, but keep their identities a secret. Gotti's lawyers claim this created an atmosphere which made it impossible for Gotti to get a fair trial and is the basis of an appeal. Gotti was found guilty April 2nd of murder, racketeering, tax evasion, and other crimes. Gotti had escaped prosecution three times, garnering him the name Teflon Don. If you stop the average person on the street and say, tell me the one person who to you represents the very essence of mafia, I would say John Gotti. Gotti seized control of the Gambino family in 1985 after the murder of then-boss Paul Castellano. It was one of Gotti's closest associates and heir apparent, Sammy the Bull Gravano, who testified that Gotti ordered Castellano's murder and watched as Castellano was gunned down outside a New York City steakhouse. Hours of secretly recorded tapes in and around Gotti's headquarters helped to bring down the dawn. In a previously scheduled hearing, Gotti's attorneys will go before the district court tomorrow, requesting the judge to set aside the guilty verdicts. Gotti says he will take whatever steps necessary to keep from spending the rest of his life in jail. Regina Blakely, CBS News, New York.